Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 196 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, and you are listening to the number one show for membership site owners. Today, we're talking about the differences and the distinctions between an online course and a membership site. Now, online courses and memberships are two of the most common, most popular types of online educational products. However, often the terms course and membership are used interchangeably, and this can cause a lot of confusion. So you may have found yourself asking, what is the difference between an online course and a membership site? Or more specifically, if you're early on in your journey, which should I create? an online course or a membership. Is an online course just a membership? Are they kind of one and the same if there's some overlaps? The truth is they do share a lot of similarities. From a technical standpoint, an online course is essentially a type of membership site. Remember that a membership site is basically just any website where you need to have a registered account in order to access protected content that otherwise you wouldn't be able to access. And typically you're going to be paying for that access. So in that sense, an online course is just a type of membership site if you look at things from a purely technical level. And again, that adds to a lot of confusion. So what are the actual differences? Is it really just a case of semantics? Are they both just terms for describing the same sort of thing? So let's look at membership sites first. A typical membership site, when people like me and people in the online business space are talking about memberships, usually it involves, again, as we mentioned, access to premium content that is paid for. Typically, that payment is a monthly subscription or an annual subscription that doesn't have any specific end date. So it's just continuous. You keep paying indefinitely for as long as you decide to remain a member. In exchange for that, usually it's not just a case of paying for access to a library of content that never changes. Generally, an online membership will have regular new content released every month, every few months, sporadically. The expectation is that if you're paying on an ongoing basis, there will be content released on an ongoing basis. That content may take a variety of different forms. Sometimes it will include courses. Sometimes it'll include workshops, downloads, resources, tools, all sorts of different things. So, for example, in our old membership, membersiteacademy.com, we have courses, we have expert workshops, we have a live Q&A every two weeks, we have resources such as our free member-only theme, all of that sort of stuff. So, it's a broader library of more varied content. And the expectation is that you'll come in and you'll use the parts you're interested in, you'll use the parts you need, as opposed to progressing through a linear pathway. So, the content in a membership is usually quite varied and typically a membership site will also include access to an online community as well, either an online forum or a Facebook group or even a Slack channel. Now, typically, most membership sites are open all year round, so you can sign up and subscribe at any time and progress at your own pace. There is a trend within the online business space of having memberships that open and close, so they're only available to sign up at specific times of the year. But in the wider industry, most membership type businesses are always open. The biggest and the most popular ones are open all of the time. Now, when it comes to online courses, a typical online course will involve paying a one-time fee. So usually you won't pay a subscription to access an online course. You might pay installments, but ultimately it's one fixed price. There's no ongoing aspect to it. Generally, that price will give you either lifetime access to that content or it'll give you access for a fixed period of time. Some courses will only allow you access for a year, for example. 
The content within a course is generally a lot more structured than you'll find in many memberships. Usually that content is organized into modules and lessons where you follow a very highly defined content path. You don't jump around, you don't pick and choose the lessons that you are most interested in. You follow through the curriculum. It's an A to Z in most cases. Now, some courses will actually deliver that content on a schedule. So this is something called drip feeding, And we actually talked a lot more about that back in episode 190, if you want to check that out at themembershipguys.com slash 190. This is where you will get one lesson at a time or one module or one section of your course at a time every week, every month or something like that. So some courses will drift you the content, others will make the entire course available at once. Usually you'll find that there's gamification elements, so maybe they'll have quizzes or assignments in order to help assess your learning and make sure you're actually taking everything in. You'll see things like progress tracking so you can see how far you're going and so on. While there's not usually as big a community aspect to an online course, sometimes you will find group support, maybe there'll be Q&As, maybe there'll be a little pop-up Facebook group that's available temporarily for students of the course. Some courses even have one-to-one support involved as well. So they're generally a lot more focused and a lot more rigidly defined. Most online courses will actually have a fixed start date. So they have a very specific enrollment period. Everyone joins during that period, the doors close, and then everybody starts on the same date. That start date is clearly defined and there'll typically be a very clear end point as well when you've consumed the whole course or when all the modules or all the lessons have been released to you. Unlike in a membership where again your subscription will just keep going for as long as you want to remain a member and in exchange for that you're going to get that continuously added content as well. So your online course will typically have an expected deliverable. So for example, if you're studying a course on Facebook advertising, the expectation will be that the course will take you step by step through the Facebook ad process from start to finish. And the end result will be the creation of your own campaign. Again, memberships aren't always geared around delivering one specific end result. So as we said, there are a lot of similarities between courses and memberships. They are all centered around paying for access to exclusive content, but the main difference is the nature of that content, how focused it is, and how that access to that content is controlled. A course is typically finite, so eight weeks or six modules, while a membership site is ongoing. Typically with a membership site, you'll also lose access to the content once your payments stop. However, with a course, usually you'll pay once or you pay a set amount of installments and you get either long-term access or you have lifetime access. Some courses will actually enable you to download the material that you paid for as well. From a business perspective, membership sites, of course, have the recurring revenue aspect that you don't get with courses. As such, income from courses can be a lot more sporadic depending on the strategy that you use. You tend to find with a course that much more of your business and much more of the income you generate is centered around having successful launches. So you can find that there are more kind of peaks and valleys in your income with a course versus your income with a membership. So those are the differences between an online course and a membership. Let's run through some pros and cons. When it comes to courses, the pros are that a course is generally a much more clearly defined product. We talked about the fact that online courses will usually have a very specific end result that people are essentially buying. They're a lot more focused. They're a lot more structured. There's a very specific path that you're selling. And as such, they are easier to sell than memberships. Usually a membership is a whole collection of a variety of different things. It's a wider library that you pick and choose the parts that you want. While that's fantastic, it's also a much more abstract concept. It's a lot harder to really zero in on the best bits of a membership than it is to really clearly zero in on the selling points of an online course. With a membership, you're selling a box full of goodies. With a course, you are selling a very specific outcome, a very specific result. So they can be a lot easier to sell than memberships. It's also easier to create multiple separate courses independent of each other. 
quite often with a membership, you might find that your members will have an expectation that any new courses, any workshops or anything like that that you put out there would be included in your membership. So it can be more challenging to have multiple info products, multiple courses operating independent of each other. So when you're just selling courses, that is far easier to do and there's far more potential for cross-selling, upselling, bundling courses together and that sort of thing. Now, online courses do typically sell for a higher one-off fee than the equivalent of a month or two of your membership. So while you don't have the recurring revenue aspect, you do get more of a cash injection upfront immediately with each purchase. And because it's a one-off sale, you don't need to worry about things like retention and churn. You are getting all of the payment for your product in one shot, and you don't need to worry about how to hang on to that customer in order to continue earning money from them because all your money is essentially earned in that single transaction now of course that's not to say that you know there's no value in nurturing the customer relationship because again if you've got multiple products that you want to sell to them in the future then you know you obviously want to keep that relationship going but the income of your business doesn't rely as heavily on nurturing that customer relationship as it does with a membership. With a membership, you cannot survive on one-off sales. You cannot grow and scale a successful membership if all you're managing to do is get people to sign up for one month. So you're just getting a single transaction from them. You need to have a retention strategy with a course you don't need to. So it is one and done. And you know that same goes for the actual content production process as well. Once the content of your course is created, you're done. There's no further work involved in supporting the product. Now, you know, you might have a course where you are giving some sort of personal support or you are running a community, but again, the core of the product is done. All of the heavy lifting is done up front and so you can then just sit back and focus on the marketing and the sales side or you can develop additional products so those are the big pros of an online course there are some cons there's a lot more pressure to get it right again we talked about the fact that you know you are doing all this work up front to create the product but if you mess it up and the product you create sucks that's going to blow things out of the water for you. That's going to really cause some problems. There's not as much room for maneuver because when people buy a course, they are expecting a finished product. Whereas with a membership, people are more aware that obviously the value is going to be delivered over time, new content is going to be added and all that sort of stuff. With a course, people expect everything that is promised to be delivered from the get-go so that puts a lot more pressure on you to get it right not just in terms of the actual course content and making sure that it's it's good and making sure it delivers on the result people are expecting but also a lot of pressure to get the launch right as well so much is going to rely on the launch of your product on the launch of your course and a bad launch can set you back significantly if you spend six months creating a course that you think is incredible and then you open the doors to it you start enrollment and nobody signs up it just flops not only has that six months of all of that upfront work been wasted but also now what are you going to do because you've done all that work And you've invested all that time in anticipation of getting the financial payoff. If you don't get that payoff, you've essentially gone for six months unpaid. And now if you need to create a new course, you're going to go for another three, four, five, six months unpaid. And, you know, if the same thing happens again, you're going to be in trouble. So there's a lot more pressure, so much more rests on the launch. There's so much more pressure to deliver. The stakes are a lot, lot higher. Of course, I mentioned there's a lot more upfront work with an online course versus a membership because, again, people are expecting the definitive article when they buy that course. So there are some definite downsides to going with online courses versus memberships. Let's talk about some of the pros of a membership site. Again, a lot of them we've already kind of touched on when covering the cons of courses. There's definitely less expectation for a membership to be a finished 
product. Memberships are ever evolving. They're easier to change and to improve over time. So that means that usually you can execute a lot quicker. It also means that if initial reactions to the content you've created aren't fantastic, you can maneuver. You can be quite nimble compared to selling an online course. There's also that recurring revenue element. This is a thing that draws most people to memberships. Recurring revenue is fantastic. It's a slower burn. It can take a lot longer to reach the dizzy heights financially as you might be expecting or might be hoping for. But the fact that it does build and build and build over time gives you a great deal more stability, more predictability, more profitability and reliability in your income. You're not having those peaks and valleys, those highs and lows. You're not relying on having a great launch. You are building a solid foundation for your business. And this recurring revenue builds over time. Whereas with a course, you're getting paid over and over and over and over again. And if you do a good job of hanging on to your members, then every customer you sign up, even if your membership is only $50 a month, if you're keeping people for 20 months, 30 months, 40 months, then that represents thousands of dollars over the lifetime of that customer. With an online course, you might look at that immediate cash injection, that immediate transaction value and think, oh, well, online courses make so much more money. However, you need to think long term. It's all about customer lifetime value. A member who sticks around for 20 months in a $50 a month membership is worth exactly the same as somebody who purchases a $2,000 course. The only difference is the time frame. So that recurring revenue is fantastic and it's no surprise that it's one of the biggest reasons people explore the membership model in the first place. It's hard. You do have to do a great job of taking care of churn and being good with retention, but the payoff for that can be huge. And again, we're talking about a much lower price point for a membership in terms of people actually looking at the price on the page, how much they need to pay today. A membership is a much lower price point than the typical online course. As such, it's more accessible. So over time, people do end up paying either the same as they might pay with a course or maybe even more, but it's broken down month on month, year on year. The user is in more control of how much they pay. If they are budget limited, then someone can decide to join your membership and just be a member for a month or two. If someone, Whereas that same person might not be able to afford the upfront cost of a course. So that lower price point being more accessible to more people enables you to potentially serve a much wider audience than you might be able to with your course. Now with an online course, you pretty much live or die based on the content. A course is content. So if the content sucks, if the content doesn't meet expectations, then your course will likely fail. With a membership, it's not just about the content. In fact, there are some very successful memberships that don't have anything that would constitute traditional content. Some memberships that are purely community focused or purely coaching focused. So again, there's much less of an emphasis on content when it comes to memberships than there is compared to courses. Now, of course, I am biased. This is the Membership Guys podcast after all, not the Course Guys podcast. So to be fair, there are some downsides. There are some cons to memberships. One, it's a bigger commitment. A membership is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a long-term business model. You can't sign people up to your membership and then decide two weeks later that you're just not feeling it. You've changed your mind. It's much harder to shelve this idea than it is to shelve a failed course. So the commitment level is definitely bigger. The expectation is that you're going to be around for the long term. It also, as we said before, when we were talking about recurring revenue, it does take longer potentially to reach your financial goals. So it's so easy to be seduced by all these seven figure launch stories on social media where people are selling these thousand $2,000 courses and they're making an absolute fortune in one weekend. It can take a lot longer to get at that point with a membership. This is setting aside the fact that most of that braggadocious stuff is actually BS. Um, But yeah, let's not, let's not dig into that. But let's just say you do have lofty financial goals. It is a slower burn. It is a longer climb to get there with a membership site. 
However, because of the nature of recurring revenue, when you do reach those goals, you'll be on much, much more solid ground. Now, again, we've got to keep in mind that in order for your membership to be successful, you will need to not only do a good job of hanging on to your members, so managing churn, bringing that down, having a solid retention strategy is crucial, but you also need a continuous stream of new members. Now, of course, courses need continuous purchases, the need to be launching and all that sort of stuff, but the higher price point of a course means that they can be more intermittent. Someone can launch their course twice a year and make all the money that they need to make. So they're only needing to focus their sales and marketing attention a handful of times a year. Whereas with a membership, you do need that continuous stream of new members to replace ones who leave. And finally, you will quite often find that a membership site has a lot more moving parts than an online course does. There's far more choice in terms of online platforms for courses like Thinkific, like Teachable. There's more choice in that arena than there is for online memberships. And memberships tend to have a greater degree of variety in terms of the features that people want, the design and structure of the website. So it can be a little more challenging on the tech front to get your membership up and running than it would be to get a course up and running. And of course, that's why you join membersiteacademy.com because we've got, you know, walkthroughs on how to set up all that stuff and resources and all of that. Okay, I promise, plug over. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot more moving part on the tech side with a membership than they typically are with courses. Okay, so we talked about what memberships are, what courses are, how they compare to each other, what the pros and the cons are. So hopefully you're now fully informed about the differences and you're starting to get more of an idea of which to create. If you're still not quite there, there's a few questions that you can ask yourself. Firstly, does your chosen topic have a specific A to Z path that can be followed that will lead to a specific result? If you're teaching a very specific topic that can be broken down into a set number of steps, if it's a very linear subject and it's something that people will likely want to learn quite quickly, then a course may be the best option versus a membership, which are typically a little broader, a little more about long-term learning, long-term support. You wouldn't start a membership site to teach people how to ride a bike, but you might start a membership site to support cycling enthusiasts. So think about your chosen topic and how suited it is to each of those models. Secondly, does the topic have enough to it, so enough different facets, that actually would enable you to create continuous ongoing content. Again, we talked about the fact with memberships, there is that expectation that there'll be new content created. So a good exercise is to actually grab a sheet of paper and just start writing down ideas for potential training webinars. So let's say you are thinking about starting a membership. One of the common things people will do is they'll have a monthly training session, 60 to 90 minutes covering a different topic each month. So sit down with a piece of paper and start writing down some potential ideas for different training webinars that you could do on your topic. If you can't get any further than 15 to 20 ideas, then that could potentially spell trouble. Now, this isn't to say that you shouldn't start a membership site unless you can plan out 10 years worth of content. But if you're already struggling, if you've run out of possible ideas after only a year or so's worth of planning, then maybe you might want to explore a course rather than a membership. At a bare minimum, there should be enough ideas for you to release one piece of content for at least a year. But if you reach that year point, and that's as far as you can go mentally, then this isn't a long-term topic. This isn't something that's going to be best suited to a membership. So the third question I ask is, can you make that commitment, that long-term commitment? Can you show up and create content every month? Can you be in the community answering questions every other day? Membership site is so much more of an ongoing commitment than an online course. You need to know what you're getting into from the start and make sure that that actually fits. If you are very limited on time, maybe you've got a few months where you can focus in on one project where you can get something out there, but then going forward, you're not really going to have much bandwidth. If that's the case, you're not going to have the time in your schedule that is needed to actually deliver on an ongoing basis. With a membership, 
all of the work is ongoing. With a course, all of the work is upfront. So figure out which of those two scenarios best fits your current circumstances and your current ability to commit. The final question to ask yourself is, do you want to actually run an online community? We mentioned community as being one of the distinguishing elements between an online course and a membership. With memberships, the community is vital. It's so much more important to the success of a membership site than it is to a short course. Now, it is still a good idea to have some element of community in a course, whether that's live calls, Q&As, or a Facebook group but it's nowhere near as big a piece of the puzzle as it is with memberships. You can, if you want, just leave your course students to their own devices. You don't need to have a community. With a membership, you're typically going to want to have one. They'll typically require a strong community element to help with retention. This takes time, this takes energy to create, to moderate, to show up in and participate in on an ongoing basis. So, Hopefully, those four questions will help to clarify and solidify your decision as to whether a course will be better for you or a membership. Ultimately, there is no right or wrong answer. There is no superior business model. While we are massively, massively biased towards memberships, they are not for everybody. So much comes down to you, to your topic, to your audience, and to what approach is going to help you to best serve them. So hopefully this has helped you to get that clarity. So if you're early on in your journey and you're still trying to decide whether a course or a membership is the way to go, then hopefully this episode has helped you out. Maybe you're a little bit further on in your journey and perhaps you're selling courses and a membership and you're trying to decide which one you're going to commit 100% to. Again, hopefully some of what we talked about in this episode is going to make that decision easier for you. That's it from me for this week. Thank you so much for spending spending some of your time with me. I always love to hear from our listeners. If you want to hit me up on social, I'm on Twitter at Membership Guys. You can follow me on Instagram at Membership Guy, just me. <laughs> We're not the Membership Guys on uh, on Instagram. Or if you want to come into our Facebook group, we've got over 11,000 membership site owners in there and the Facebook group is completely free. On the Facebook app, just search for Membership Mastermind or type talk memberships.com into your browser that'll redirect you to our group you can sign up and we can talk more about the differences and the pros and cons between courses and memberships in there and of course you can ask pretty much anything membership related to that's it from me for this week thank you so much for hanging out with me i'll be back again next week with another installment of the membership guys podcast bye for now if you've enjoyed today's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Member Site Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.